I'm Michael Dunn, and you're listening to Oregon Rainmakers on KLCC. On this edition, we talk with Nancy Buffum, the new executive director of the Eugene Education Foundation. The foundation exists to provide funding for programs in the district that might otherwise be unmet. Nancy Buffum, the executive director for the Eugene Education Foundation, thanks so much for coming in and talking to us. It's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So talk about your career. Talk about the things that you've done that led have have led up to you taking over the leadership position for the Eugene Education Foundation. Well, Michael, this is this position is really um, kind of the culmination of my um, my work in nonprofit in advocacy for children, for families and for education. I moved to Eugene in the fall of uh, 2022, and at the time I was serving as the development director for a um, foster to adopt program Hmm. in California, which ended at the end of December. And um, when I found the Eugene Education Foundation, I was really looking for the place where I could um, become a contributor to the community in Eugene the way I had in my previous home in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm. And so this is a really great fit. And the thing that's the best about it is not only am I making programs happen for children, but I get to not just raise money, but grant money. <laughs> yeah, and that's certainly very important. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, kind of compare and contrast, you know, California to Oregon, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area to Eugene, obviously a much a much smaller city. But of course, you know, and, and being in education, I'm also from California and know, you know, education has had a lot of funding challenges in California for a long time. A lot of people will talk about, you know, natives will talk about Prop 13 and, and the property tax issue that, that, that created problems in terms of funding but you know talk about your move here and and sort of you know the idea of working in a very big metro area like San Francisco to a smaller place like Eugene but you know I'm sure many of the same issues well one of the things that I would say about uh, working in San Francisco is that when I was in San Francisco I was still hyper local in Mm. San Francisco okay Um, I was on the um the district board for the San Francisco PTA. Okay. And the PTA is an advocacy organization and also a parent involvement, parent education organization, which some of its mission is very closely related to what EEF does here. And I would say that the best things about Eugene are the best things about the San Francisco Bay Area without the worst things about the San Francisco okay. Bay Area, which to me is just the congestion and mm. the size and the manageability of achieving things um, on a real grassroots level for children and being closely connected to the people who are making the most important contributions, which is the educators, the people in the classroom, the people on the playground, the people who see the children every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, being in nonprofit management for as, for as long as you have, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, the things you love about working at a nonprofit. And then, of course, you know, what are those what are those challenges? You know, nonprofit, it's, it's amazing the work that you can do. But boy, you know, it, it, f- funding all sorts of resources can often be a challenge, right? Yeah, well, the funding, of course, is the biggest challenge. The, uh, the EEF um, has the core values of equity, agility, and impact. Mm. And the agility piece is the piece that makes nonprofit different from the public sector and different from the school district itself. As a nonprofit, as an independent, we are able to make decisions and move and make contributions and bring people together in a way that is much more Uh, loose, creative, flexible, and sometimes faster Mm. than uh, what can happen with public agencies. So it, we are, um, we're the, the active corner of, uh, of uh, program development at, uh, at uh, 4J. (laughs) 
When you were hired uh, to be the executive director for the Eugene Education Foundation, or, or EEF, as we as we said already, um, you know, what were some of the things that that when you took the job, you said this is this is like I don't know your hundred day plan, or these were the, the the couple of priorities you really wanted to hit the ground running with. The first thing that I wanted to do was to raise our profile. Okay. To raise the profile of the Eugene Education Foundation because although we've been around uh, since 1993, mm -hmm. um, there are still many people who don't know what EEF does. And so I spent my first 90 days, a lot of that in a sort of ambassadorship, going out and meeting people in the community forums and the places where the activists and advocates for children, families, and education meet in um, in Eugene. Mm. Okay. Um, and so if you could, what has been sort of that elevator pitch that you give to folks about to explain exactly what EEF uh, is and does? Well, our mission is to further educational ec excellence for all the children in the 4J school district and to remove barriers and open up opportunities so that every child with whatever their unique abilities, challenges, and dreams can achieve their full potential. Okay. Okay. Um, I would imagine that, uh, especially, you know, as, as a foundation, which obviously, you know, a big part of that is to raise funds to help w with, with shortfalls, how, whatever they may be in the school district. Um, I imagine sometimes there's some confusion around, well, gosh, you know, couldn't I just write a check to, a, a, you know, my son or daughter's school? What is this foundation? Can you kind of explain, you know, to help people understand perhaps some of that confusion that might exist about, well, what's the best way in which my money, my resources can help the district? When an individual or a business or an organization wants to make a difference um, in the school district and they have a check which to them is very important but mm -hmm. compared to millions of dollars in um, the school district budget the question is where can I uh, make this donation that will make a difference mm -hmm. and at the Eugene Education Foundation all of the projects which we fund are educator initiated. So we are responsive to the teachers, to the counselors, to the department heads at the district, and to the identified needs that come from school communities. Hmm. And so uh, EEF has an annual grants program where we invite uh, applications from any educator in 4J at any level. Hmm. And our board of directors is formed primarily, uh, they're all volunteer, and they are parents. They may be parents of uh, current 4J students or parents of graduated 4J students. They may have a, uh, an educator in their family, a parent, a spouse, a sibling who works in either 4J or another school district. And with our mission, which um, we have a strategic plan that mm -hmm. we're working on from, for, from now through the end of 2026. We have the areas of ready to learn or learning readiness, of enrichment, and of educational pathways. And we receive those grants. And our goal is just to raise enough money so that we can say yes to everybody. <laughs> Maybe just as general as you want to be, give, give an example of, of maybe what, what are some of those uh, requests that you get from educators? Because I imagine, boy, it could, be, it could be so many things, couldn't it? The requests from teachers is mostly teachers, although okay. there are other people in the district, are mostly for something that would be pivotal. Pivotal <laughs> that uh, that would make a difference hmm. if I could just have some furniture and some things for the common corner in my elementary school classroom, so that the children with um, uh, sensory differences have a place that they can take themselves out of the classroom, stay in the classroom, and calm down so that everyone can succeed. Okay. Um, 
books. Yeah. Early literacy is the highest, it should be the highest priority in education, and it is certainly um, a very high priority for us. So whenever um, a teacher asks for books for the library, for their classroom, counselors ask for books, um, books as incentives, just free books to give to the kids, books for the library, we try to fund that. But we do everything through the high school level, um, uh, including career and technical education, and the creative combination of enrichment and uh, what is CTE, uh, career and technical education. Mm -hmm. A good example is uh, North Eugene High School. The art teacher applied for a transformation of her ceramics class into a guild model so mm. that the students will graduate through the program from an apprentice to a master level, teach the younger students as they enter, develop an entrepreneurial project of a guild night, take oh. commissions from community members, and eventually raise funding so that the program can be more self-sustaining and North Eugene High School can apply for something else from EEF. Very cool, very cool. Well, we're going to take a quick break. We're talking with Nancy Buffum. She's the Executive Director for the Eugene Education Foundation. We'll be right back. I'm Barbara Dillon back, host of KLCC's Oregon Grapevine. Professor Jim Moore leads discussions on electoral politics and international relations throughout the world. He points out that new leaders and ideas are rare. We have a long democratic bench. People do not run for the big offices until they have sat on that bench for a long time. They become an entrenched part of the system. Political insights and observations on the Oregon Grapevine at klcc.org. And we're back talking with Nancy Buffum. She's the executive director for the Eugene Education Foundation. Um, like many nonprofits in our community, you know, a, a, a fundraising event is often a, a key thing. And you have one coming up. Talk about it. Yes, our Moving Forward Together gala mm -hmm. is going to be Thursday, March 21st um, from 5.30 to 8 at the University of Oregon Ford Alumni Center. And this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Um, it's a combination of a gathering mm. of our supporters and a place where people can see each other, meet some of the grantees, see some highlights about uh, our programs and our successes, and uh, raise a paddle and uh, make a donation to our unrestricted funds, which mm. we use for grants. Yeah, yeah, and I imagine that's that's extremely important. Um, you know, I often wonder. I'm sure you've seen this bumper sticker a million times. It's it says something like, you know, it'd be a great day if the Defense Department has to have a bake sale to raise money for their jets and schools had unlimited budgets. I don't know if you've ever seen. I'm paraphrasing, but it's. I often think of, of an organization such as yours. You're talking about these important programs that you're helping to fund. You know. <sighs> Sometimes I think that it is a challenge that 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 you know schools don't get the resources, school districts don't get the resources or all the resources that they they need, and and it it creates a, a, a something where an organization such as yours has to sort of fill the void. And I I kind of want to just talk philosophically about you know how important it is to have something like a foundation because needs are going to be unmet if you if if your doors weren't open that's right um the real funding crisis for 4j and for all of the schools in oregon came with what's called measure five mm. in the early 90s and um that was a change in um in a property tax and there was the same thing happened in California that's more famous nationwide, which is Prop 13 in the sure. 70s. But the effect is the same, that a major source of um, revenue for the public schools just vanished in a very short period of time. And that is when EEF um, was founded by parents who wanted to add back enrichment for their students. And we have in 
Eugene actually a very generous community mm. um, when it comes to uh, supporting education. And this May on the ballot, there is going to be um, what's called the local option levy renewal. Okay. And that is something which comes up every five years for for renewal, which is an add back um, to the funding for the school district. And when EEF is raising funds through our gala and through our annual campaigns, um, it is that's a small amount where we can make a big difference in a small way. But for everyone who's listening, um, if you are a voter in Eugene, you can support the local option levy on the May ballot, and that is a way that you will be able to ensure that it's not a new tax, it's mm. the same tax, it's the same renewal, $25 million or more a year to our schools. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you, you put it well, you know, Eugene and Lane County, very generous community that, that certainly believes in important things like education. Um, maybe if you could, you know, kind of talk about the ways in which, especially in, in your position, but also your board, talk about the ways in which you work with the community, both externally, the community writ large, but then also the community within the schools as well. I mean, obviously, I, I, as you just described, you know, the teachers are, are filling out paperwork to apply for those applications. But I imagine there's there's even more, whether it's formal, informal communication going on so that you are you know, very aligned in sort of the mission that 4J has as well as your own mission. Well, I do my best to uh, go everywhere that I can. Um, within uh, 4J, um, uh, we're fortunate that our office is in the Ed Center building. And so if I need to talk to someone and ask someone, I can just go over <laughs> to the instruction department. I can walk right over there. Um, uh, I meet regularly with leadership and attend uh, board meetings. And school board meetings are an excellent place to get information <laughs> because um, uh, school leadership will come and talk about programs and provide updates to the school board and to the public. And of course, that's on the radio. Sure. Um, and so I am listening. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to the Eugene Education Association, which is um, the teachers organization um, in April, and I will listen to their um, uh, monthly building uh, representatives. Okay. and um, let them know about our um, our grant process, but also listen. Yeah, yeah. And, and I imagine, too, just even, you know, maybe even opportunities to, to talk with principals and teachers. I just kind of wanted to get, you know, when you, when you took the position and, and coming here, you know, kind of what is the... I don't know, take the temperature of the educators in our in our community. We've gone through, you know, uh, years unlike any other coming out of COVID and, and all of the challenges that 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 educators, that students, that everybody had to go through. You know, are you able to kind of glean, you know, is there is there a sense of optimism? Is there a sense of um you know, kind of that we've come out of this better, or is it still like, boy, you know, we don't exactly know where we're going, if that makes sense. I would say that a lot changed, and because of the pandemic mm -hmm. and because of the school closures and the effect that that had on children at every age mm -hmm. and on their families, and we're not going back to anything. Okay. We are going to, as educators, the schools, families are going forward to a new reality. And some of the things that we learned during, um, because of the pandemic, are actually going to be helpful in the classroom and helpful in education. And that is an increased emphasis on social and emotional learning and a heightened awareness of everybody in the education system of the mental health needs and the basic needs of our children, um, an increased consciousness that the disparities that uh, exist because of um, uh, longtime advantage and disadvantage of different groups mm -hmm. um, whether because of culture, background, uh, race, 
uh, sexual and gender orientation. These are all er exacerbated whenever there's a crisis. Yeah. And so I think that um, that educators and we in the nonprofit world and we in the community have learned something. The um, what I'm told by people who are on the ground in the classroom is that the this isn't going away. Mm. That um, a child who had two years missing um, preschool is not the same child as a child who had three, two years of preschool. Mm. So that's a kindergartner now. And that the children at every age um, are showing the signs of missing that um, collaboration and that community spirit and that um, that co the cooperation and the socialization that are so key to learning there is no replacement on the screen for being in person with a teacher in front of you interactive being able to use your body while you're learning being able to touch the things that you should be touching um, whether they are manipulables whether um, they are things in your physics or your um, your science class that there's no substitute for that and we've got a lot of catching up to do yeah well it's and it's great that you exist as an organization and that you're you, you're a, a collaborator with the school district and then of course with funders and people who write checks because obviously it takes a great deal of collaborative co collaboration especially in our day and age well that's why our uh, our campaign this year is called Moving Forward Together okay. Okay. because we are asking people in the business community who have a stake in this. These are our these children are our future. Mm. These children are our future workers. They're our future leaders. They're our future creatives and entrepreneurs. They're the people who are going to be leading this country. And so everyone in uh, Eugene and really in any community understands if they think about it that. Um, that public education is a pillar of what makes our city what it can be. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Nancy Buffum, the Executive Director for the Eugene Education Foundation, really appreciate you coming in and talking to us. Thanks so much. And uh, if anyone is interested in contributing to the Eugene Education Foundation, you can go to our website at eeflane.org. And you can also um, get some tickets to our gala if we haven't sold out by the time <laughs> this airs. And I'll make sure to put a link on our, on our show link as well. Thanks so much. That was our conversation with Nancy Buffum, the new executive director of the Eugene Education Foundation. In many ways, the foundation is a lifeline to teachers looking for resources to add to the overall education experience. This has been the Oregon Rainmakers podcast on KLCC. I'm Michael Dunn, your host. Thanks for listening.